Good, good afternoon. I am the chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Council Member Fernando Cabrera. Today we're having a second hearing and a vote on legislation by Council Member Ben Kalos proposed introduction 732B of 2018 in relation to establishing a full public match campaign finance system. Since 1988, the New York City's Campaign Finance Act, ministered by the Campaign Finance Board, has provided candidates who choose to participate in the city's public finance program with funds to help finance their campaigns. In exchange for limits on expenditures and other requirements, eligible portions of matchable contributions to participating candidates are now matched at eight for every $8 for every $1 contributed by a New York City resident. The intent of the public financing program is to prevent corruption, to enhance public confidence in local government by reducing the improper influence of big dollar campaign contributors, and to increase engagement with local communities by encouraging candidates to raise small dollar contributions from average New Yorkers. Proposed introduction 732B of 2018 will amend the Campaign Finance Act's current cap on matching funds available to candidates participating in the public financing program. Specifically, the bill will allow candidates to receive matching funds in an amount such that a candidate could reach the expenditure limit solely through a combination of matchable contributions and public funds. With the current eight to one match, this will functionally be a public fund cap of 88.89% of the expenditure limit. The new full public funds cap will be available to participating candidates who select option A for new contribution limits and fundraising thresholds in the 2021 primary and general election. Participating candidates who do not select this option will continue to have the existing public fund cap of 55% of the expenditure limit applied through 2021. Starting in 2022, the public match cap will apply to all participating candidates. In a change from the A version, the bill would mirror the approach of local law 1 of 2019 by requiring the candidates to select option A should have both the contribution limited and matching formula of such option applied to all contributions received by such candidate no matter when received. The bill will also provide for and make adjustments to early payments dates for the dispersal of public funds, including requiring that CFB make a first payment date on, on December 15, preceding the election year, and make payments on the, 15, on the 15th day of each month from January through April of the election year. Conforming amendments are made to align with both the new early payment dates and the new primary dates, the deadline by which candidates wishing to participate in the program must file first file a certification accepting the program's terms and condition and the deadline by which financial disclosure reports must be filed with the conflict of interest board. Technical uh, amendments are made to the candidate's statement of need requirements and the bill provides that candidates will qualify for additional public funds if opposed by another candidate who has received public fund payments. The bill will permit participating candidates to use public funds for costs related to defending a challenge to the validity of a candidate's petition to get on the ballot. The bill will adjust the contribution limits for transition and, uh, and uh, inauguration, and it is to match those four participating candidates under the contribution limits to be in effect in 2022. The bill will appeal, will repeal the provisions added to the city charter by ballot proposal question number one and replace these provisions were not otherwise amended by this bill within the administrative code. Finally, the bill will remove portions of the Campaign Finance Act that have expired or have been rendered unenforceable. I would like to thank our staff who who worked, made this hearing possible, Brad Reed, Daniel Collins, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forjong, Sebastian Bacci, and Charlotte, Charlotte Martin, as well as my own legislative director, D director Claire McLevain. I will now ask the sponsor of the bill to speak on his legislation, Councilmember Ben Carlos. 
I want to wake up in a city with a government that actually works for New Yorkers. Affordable housing, a world-class education for our children, and a transit system that gets you where you need to go. For far too long, politicians have spent their time fundraising from the 1% instead of working for the residents who elected them. Spent more than a decade fighting to clean up our government. I put state legislative voting records online 10 years ago, almost to the day. I authored the law that made the city council a full-time job and eliminated personal income payments to council members from the speaker to reward and maintain loyalty known as Lulu's. However, candidates for mayor could still take contributions of $5,100 from real estate developers or even more when it's bundled by their entire family. When I got elected, I introduced legislation to increase the match to $250 per donor and allow candidates to go from matching a little more than half of the small dollars they received to matching every small dollar. The problem was that while public matching system worked for the city council, helping newcomers who reflect the communities and diversity of our great city get elected, at a borough-wide and citywide level, the big money gap was far too large to fill with small dollars. To run for city council, you had to raise $68,000. But that big money gap grew to $2.6 million for mayor. When I introduced the legislation to close the gap last term, I could not secure a hearing on the bill until we got 32 sponsors, even though I was the chair of the Governmental Operations Committee. Now I want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank Fernando Cabrera, who was my co-prime sponsor last term when I was chair and continues to be my co-prime sponsor now that he is chair. His passion for elections and campaign finance shines through. Thank you. At our hearing last term, we heard supportive testimony for the legislation from labor organizations such as 32BJ, CWA District 1, political organizations including Working Families Party, the New York Progressive Action Network, New Kings Democrats, New York Democratic Lawyers Councils, Eleanor Legacy Committee, organizing organizations representing communities of interest including New York Immigration Coalition, New York Communities for Change, Make the Road, Community Voices Heard, Bridge Roots, Housing Advocates at Urban Justice Centers, Tenants and Neighbors, Historic District Council, Issue Advocates at Strong Economy for All, Friends of the Earth, Good Government Groups like the Women's City Club of New York, Effective New York, Reinvents Albany, Citizens in Action, Demos, Public Citizen, NYPER, Common Cause, and the Brennan Center. Though their issues were legion, from fighting for the resident rights of workers, immigrants, communities of color, tenants, to saving our planet, all of them could agree that in order to win on their individual issue, we needed to reduce the influence of big money in politics. Last year, the mayor went around the council and took the issue of campaign finance reform straight to the people, who it turned out created de cared a great deal about the issue. On November 8, 2018, 1,151,775 people voted in favor of campaign finance reforms proposed by Cat Ballot Question 1, a staggering 80% of voters. Now, for context, almost as many people voted for campaign finance reform as voted for any candidate for mayor in the 2017 general election. Following this victory, I authored Local Law 1 of 2019, apply these reforms to the special election for public advocate and that included a retroactivity that was requested by the Campaign Finance Board. The good news is that the new system works and it has already flipped how campaigns are financed upside down and for the first time a candidate won a citywide office with a pledge not to take real estate money. Big money no longer made up three quarters of campaign cash and was replaced by small dollars which now made up almost two thirds of total funds. As Amy Lopress, the executive director of the Campaign Finance Board, testified in April, the most frequent contribution size across all candidates was just $10 compared to $100 in the previous citywide races. But one third of the money is still coming from big donations and that is directly related to the gap that still remains. That's why we need a full match and we need to do it now uh, and in part because we couldn't get it done before. Now to put this in perspective, any money from outside the city, from people doing business, from lobbyists, from political action committees, and from individuals who are writing max checks would not be matched, making big money far less valuable than small dollars from residents. And on that big money piece, only that first 175 or 250 gets matched, and the rest doesn't. 
city councils will look a lot more like a clean election system with 121 contributions of 175, giving them all the money they need to run. Borough presidents will need at least 1,041 donations. Controller and public advocate will need 2,024 donations of 250, and mayoral candidates will need 3,248 donations of 250 to raise $809,556. That is still a lot of money, but the news here is it can be done with small dollars. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his commitment er to everyday New Yorkers and the fact that he made this promise when he was running for Speaker. He's kept that promise, and politics is so often defined by the promises not kept versus the promises delivered upon. 2021 is a worst nightmare for me and every other renter in this city with 38 council members, five borough presidents, a controller and mayor, all termed out of office. I shudder to think what big money could do to try to elect a government that would work for them instead of the communities they represent. When I ran in 2013, I didn't take money from real estate. I was mocked and ridiculed, often to my face. Who knows what they said behind my back? Everyone said real estate runs this town. I was offered more money from real estate than I could ever imagine. I was told to take it if I wanted a future in politics. I did not let a broken system change me. Today, we are changing a broken system. I want to wake up in a city where elected officials don't work for big money. Elected I want to wake up in a city where elected officials work for our residents. I want to thank Rob Newman, Brad Reed, Daniel Collins, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forgione, and Sebastian Bocci and Central Staff for their work on this bill, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. I want to commend you, uh, Councilmember Kalos, uh, for being a champion for good government. Uh, you fought for it, uh, and finally today, uh, we're going to get it out of the committee. Let me recognize that uh, we've been joined by Councilmember Powers, myself, and Councilmember Yeager, who has requested uh, to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, like my colleague, I too wish to wake up in a certain kind of city. I'd like to wake up in a city where we don't have homeless children sleeping on the street wondering where they're going to get their next sandwich, where we don't have NYCHA apartments falling apart, where we don't have libraries underfunded, where members of this body don't stand on the steps of City Hall throwing their fists in the air every single day saying, where's our money for this, that, or the other thing? Very important priorities in this city. Instead, here we are today voting to put money into politicians' pockets so that they could send camp campaign flyers so they could buy more campaign buttons. Money out of our pockets, because I too am a taxpayer. Money out of the pockets of the people in this room the pockets of the people who may or may not be watching. Probably not, because this is going to slide right through and nobody cares. But this is an important point. Seven months ago, the voters of this city voted to enact a campaign finance system that is the most generous in the nation. Up to 75% of a budget will be paid by taxpayer funds. 75%. That means in the mayor's race, of a cap of $7.286 million, up to five and a half million dollars would be paid for by the taxpayers. This bill will change it that the, the full 7.2 million dollars could be paid for by the taxpayers. In a council race, $190,000 is the cap. The taxpayers would have been on the hook for 142,000. Now they'll be on the hook for 190,000. It doesn't seem to me that when the voters voted in November, they put an asterisk next to their vote and said, "Hey." This is what we're voting for, but just in case you get a chance, take some more money out of our pockets, do this a little better. I don't think we got that message. I didn't get that message. That's not what I heard. What I heard was there was a yes, no question, and the yes won. And I don't know what kind of arrogance it takes to turn around eight months, seven months after the voters delivered a vote and to say, no, voters, you're wrong. It's not the first time we did it. We've already done it once this year, to turn around and tell the voters no. Voters, not interested in your opinion. We're going to do it the way we want. We're going to do it as an incumbency protection program. Don't be fooled. It, this doesn't make it easier for people to come and run for the council. What this does is this puts money in the pockets of people who are already holding office, of the people who are voting for this, of the people who are voting for this and running for re-election, and the people who are voting for this and running for higher office. That's what this is about. Anybody tells you it's about taking big money out of politics, then they would have proposed the bill to ban PAC contributions. 
they would have proposed a bill to lower the campaign finance limits, the maximum that someone can spend on a race. In the last uh, election cycle, a council cap was $182,000. It went up to 190. dollars Nobody in this council is saying, let's bring it back to 182. dollars the mayor's race was $6.96 million in the primary and the general, each a separate cap. It's now $300,000 more for a primary, $300,000 more for a general. Nowhere in this body are you hearing the words, hey, let's bring that cap down. We want to get big money out of politics. Let's hold the spending down. Nobody is saying, hey, let's limit how much we're giving in public funds to the contribution limit of $250, but instead of matching $250, let's match only the first $25 of that. What regular New Yorker walks around with a checkbook throwing $250 at politicians? That's not the way campaigns are funded when you're talking about the grassroots. When you look at candidates who raise money from the people of New York, they're not raising in $250 clips from the regular person who runs the block association. Those people are giving $25. Lower the contribution limits even further. Nobody's saying that, because this is not about getting big money out of politics. This is about dipping the hands of politicians, politicians dipping their own hands into the pockets of the taxpayers to swipe the cash, to do it now when it's under the radar, when nobody's going to notice because everybody's watching what's going on in Albany and everybody's watching what we're doing on the budget, and this is going to slide right through with literally no debate. This is the debate. You're watching it right now, and now it's going to pass. I will be voting no, Mr. Chairman. I recognize that my colleague has uh, long desired a program that, uh, that uh, provides for a, fur for a more generous public financing system. But it's also important to note that his proposals were made long before the voters actually opined on it. The voters have spoken. And uh, as the chairman said in his description of the bill, Literally, amongst the first words in the bill are the words that this bill, and I want to re read it so that I don't get it wrong. Repeal. We're repealing the decision of the voters made not seven months ago. Section one, repeal. Section two, repeal. We're repealing what they did. They just did it. We didn't even give it a chance to work in a citywide election before we stepped in and, and big-footed them with our own wise ideas. So again, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I will be voting now. Thank you so much. And let me just say that uh, coming from one of the poorest council matter districts uh, in New York City, I wish back in 2010 we had this bill already passed. So difficult to raise uh, funds uh, for campaigns and actually it doesn't go to our pockets. Uh, it goes to our campaign to get the message out uh, and to let the voters uh, decide which way they would like to see their district go, which leadership uh, should be established in their district to make a difference. Uh, I, I only wish we had this before. Uh, because I, in, I could tell you in districts like mine, uh, so desperately needed, and now we're going to have it. And with that, let me turn it over uh, to the clerk to call out for the vote. Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Governmental Operations. Roll call vote on intro 732B. Chair Cabrera. Yes. Kalos. Yes. Mizell. Yes. Powers. Just permission to explain my vote. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. I want to um, start by saying that, uh, for, so I, I just want to recognize Councilman Kales has been working on this bill for years. And be, when I was a candidate, I stood on the steps of City Hall with him, talk about campaign and finance reform. And this was the, the sort of the key bill that uh, we discussed with a number of the good government groups because bills like this and other, and other efforts and things like that were on the charter as well encourage more people to get into government and to run for office. It's not just a big money game that you can, you can go out there, you can raise money from grassroots uh, donors, and you can be part of the city council or you know, hopefully one day the state assembly or the state senate. I've um, watched him work tirelessly on this bill. I want to give him a lot of credit because this is really one of those efforts where you go out and you build it and eventually you get what it um, get what you you ask for. I just want to which I, I I am certainly sensitive to the concerns that have been raised um, uh, amongst those who are uh, you know current candidates that 
um, feel the you know that this bill has a negative impact on them, and I'm sensitive to the idea of any time we're sort of changing the rules uh, during a campaign cycle. Yeah, you know, I think as Calman noted, we've done it before. We did it for the special election in the public advocates race, but certainly I think it's also upholding the spirit of the law that was passed and the uh, I'm sorry of the charter that was passed to continue to make this about smaller donations and about grassroots support and to encourage candidates to the race. That being said, I you know, I do want to recognize those concerns. I know a number of colleagues probably here are affected by it, and others have raised the concern publicly. And I don't think as a body we should ignore those concerns. Um, but I am voting I because I've you know I stood. I stood out. I supported this bill when I was a candidate. I do believe in the mission of taking money out of the out of the system, lowering the contributions. And at the end of the day, and when we have a system, we have an opportunity to do that. I think we should take it. And I just want to congratulate um, Councilman Kalos on his hard work to get here today. Thank you, Jaeger. With great sadness about what we're doing to New Yorkers today, I vote no. By a vote of four in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. The item has been adopted. We're going to keep it open into 1 o'clock, 25 minutes. Thank you.